Diebenkorn, we consider Diebenkorn California's premier artist kind of of all time. I mean, there's there's people that are rapidly coming up to kind of almost to his level, but to date, he is one of the most successful Californians that's, that's ever been. I was asked by the foundation, the Diebenkorn Foundation, if, if I would be interested in putting a show together that could travel. And they said, you could kind of pick and choose what you would like to do it on. And they have an amazing database with great photos of everything that ever existed, that they know exists by Diebenkorn. The thing that kept coming up of what they had the most of were things that were early. And that was in part because Phyllis Diebenkorn, his the artist widow, died in 2015. And a lot of those things had not been seen. And sometimes even the foundation didn't even know about them. I thought about doing maybe Diebenkorn women or Diebenkorn still lifes. Or there's a lot of different slices you could take, but Diebenkorn early on was the thing that I knew least about and seemed to have been the least written about and, and shown. Um, and so that's what we decided to do. And then I just needed to read everything that ever existed on Diebenkorn, which I said to their director, to their um, director, and he said, well, there's a lot. And I, he wasn't kidding. There, I had a stack of books in my office. It's about 12 feet long and about this high of books and articles and, and theses and catalog raisonnés. And so you have to kind of come up to speed with all of that before you can add your own take on things because I like to use his words as much as possible uh, because that's the only real documentation that you have sometimes is what he would say about his own work and it was um, important to the foundation and important to me that I didn't put words in his mouth you know that, that he didn't mean to be there uh, because that happened to him over the course of his life in career anyway is that people are always reading things into his paintings that he didn't necessarily want them to read into them. In 1948 is really when he became a mature artist and he found his own voice, as I like to say. So up until that time, he's sort of searching, 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 and then all of a sudden, wham, he gets it. And you can see that in the paintings.